Hello, and welcome to Engineering Economy. This is Dr. Ola Kammerdiner. We will talk today about annual cash flow analysis. We also will um, discuss the following topics. We'll talk about annual cash flow calculations first. Then we will talk about annual cash flow analysis. We will also discuss how to apply annual cash flow techniques, in particular useful lives that are equal to the analysis period, when useful lives are different from the analysis period, infinite analysis period, and we will finally discuss how to apply annual cash flow techniques using spreadsheets. You will learn how to apply annual cash flow techniques in various situations in selecting the best alternative. And you will be able to use um, develop and use spreadsheets in solving engineering economic problems. So let's take a look at this little case. It's a common manufacturer strategy to have cheap initial cost and then expensive periodic cost. For example, King Cam Gillette, an inventor of the safety razor, gave his razor away free of charge, but his business revenue soared. Why? Can Gillette's strategy work with other products? Why or why not? So if you think about it, right, giving away for free, you're getting something with uh, initial cost to you of acquiring this equipment being zero. But then if you have to replace the uh, uh, char chargers uh, for the razor, it might be very, very expensive. And if, if they're replaced often, then again, right, that's why his business revenue soared. What are ethical issues do producers and marketers face in designing and selling their products? Is it true that anything goes in business and COVID Emptor. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, annual cash flow calculations. Here is example 6-1 from the book. A student bought 1,000 worth of furniture. What is the equivalent annual cost if it expected to last 10 years and the interest rate is 7%? So you can see that we're looking at the initial cost of 1,000 and here's the cash flow diagram that represents having to pay initial cost of 1,000. So you can see that we have an arrow pointing down at zero, at time zero. And so what we want to do is find equivalent annual cost. So this uh, amount, right, the present amount, need to be split up into equivalent uniform series. And this is a cash flow diagram for this equivalent annual cost. So again, because it's a cost, we have errors pointing down and it's an annual cost. So we have it at the end of the every year, at the end of year one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way through 10 years. So now what we want to do is basically we want to find this A, which is the annual, uh, uniform annual amount that's equivalent to P. So find A given P. We can set up an equation where our equivalent uniform annual cost, right, which is our A, is basically equals to P and then multiply by the compounding factor. So this compounding factor is of course A given P because this is a A, this is a P, we always have a P, then here we also have a P, right? It's the same, the same sequence of the same things. So a here, the thousand is a P, so we have a P. And then of course, interest rate is 7%, so we have seven here. And then the series are all the way through 10 years, so we have 10. And so when we plug in, right, the, the value of a given P at 7% and 10 years, where i is 7% and n is 10, then multiplying it by 1,000 will lead us to $142.40. So this is right, the answer for the equivalent uniform annual cost.
that are expected to last 10 years. Here's another example. So this is example 6.2 from the book, which also shows us how to perform annual cash flow calculations. A student bought a thousand dollars worth of furniture. What is the equivalent annual cost if it's expected to last 10 years and can be sold for 200? So notice that now not only we have a thousand dollars worth, right? So the thousand dollars is the initial cost that we have, but then we can sell that furniture after we used it for 10 years for 200. So think of what is this 200? Yes, you are of course right. 200 is a future uh, value. And if we have this as a thousand, right, because we buy it, right, that's our cost. What is the 200? Is it also a cost? No, of course it's not a cost. You're right. It's a salvage value. So salvage value is going to point up, right? It's a cash flow would be pointing up. So this one is a cash flow pointing down. This one is a cash flow pointing up. The thousand is, of course, right, is initial cost. So this cash flow will be, we will draw it on a cash flow diagram at time zero. But where will we place 200 on the cash flow diagram? What time will that be placed? Of course, you're absolutely right. It's at 10 years. So this is a cash flow diagram. And we have the thousand, right, present here, initial cost at zero, and then a future amount of salvage value of 200 at year 10, the end of year 10. So what do we want to do? We want to find the equivalent annual cost for this type of cash flow, right? Notice that now, if before we only had a single cash flow on the previous, in the previous example 6.1, in the example 6.2, we actually have two cash flows here. So for this type of cash flow diagram, we want to find its equivalent uniform annual cost throughout 10 years. So here's a cash flow diagram for the equivalent distribution right, of, of cash flows. So now we have the series, uniform series of cash flows, and they're throughout 10 years. And this is should be the, all these payments should be equivalent to this. So how do we do that? Well, now again, right, not only we have ZP, we also have S. So we're finding the cost, right, we need to split the P into pieces of A and then split the S into pieces of A. So we convert P into annual and we also convert S into, P into annual. So P is the present uh, payment, right, or pay, uh, present cash flow, as is a cash flow in the future. So we're going to have a different discounting factors for these two. So let's go ahead and compute A. So again, A, right, we call it equivalent uniform annual cost. It's actually comprised of two pieces, right? A part of A that we get from the thousand right, of the cost of 1,000 initial cost. And so that's the same as we had in, in example 6.1, right? This is the present. We want to find the A. So A, P, so the discounting factor we multiplied by is A given P, 7% in years. And then there is a portion of A that is uh, from the S, right? So the S can be split up into equivalent uniform annual uh, portion of it. And of course, because it's a benefit and not the cost, it's going to be positive. But because we're looking for the cost, the benefit is a negative cost. And therefore, this 200 is actually was a minus, right? The thousand was a cost too, just as A is a cost. So here we just have a plus because we're looking for the cost. But 2,000 is a benefit, right? The, the salvage 
the self is real of 2000 is a benefit and benefit is negative cost and that's why we have negative 200 and also right the 200 is in a different point of time than this initial cost of a thousand it's actually in the future from zero right so it's a future amount and so we want to find the annual equivalent annual amount from the future amount so find a given f because this 2000 is actually f so a given f a given f right so discount factor is a given f seven percent ten years and so then right if we find this from for example from the tables right we can find this when we look up the page that has seven percent and then we find the columns given telling us a given p and the in the intersection of this column with the row n equals 10 we find this discount factor well the same page has also column a given f and so on the same row 10, right, but under the column A given F, there is a discount factor A given F 7% 10. So we can use that, right, uh, multiply it by negative 200 and add it to the 1,000 and multiply it by the A given P discount factor. And so when we compute all this, this leads to $127.92. So these are the new costs. Notice, right, these costs are different from the costs that we had in the example 6.1. In fact, in example 6.1, here's our example 6.1, because we don't have the salvage value, the costs are larger, they're $142.40. Um, so because we didn't have the salvage value, we had a larger uniform uh, form annual cost. That were equivalent to that so but here right it the costs are smaller because we have the salvage value which reduces the cost by negative 200 right multiplied by a given f and so right these are the costs for this case so here's another way to compute the same thing right so it's still example 6 2 but we could compute it in a different way so recall right this, these were our cash flow diagrams we wanted to find the equivalence this is represents the equivalence of these cash flows to these type of cash flows and so the way we did it is we set up the equation for equivalent uniform annual cost right we just discussed how we set this up so this what we found at the end there and so notice right that we learned previously when we discussed different uh, discount factors we in uh, I believe in chapter 3 we learned that we, there is also equivalence between a p a given p and a given f and we can find that right we can find this and use this right so a given p i n is always equal to a given f i n plus i and so basically using that we can plug this in right instead of say this one right so if you plug it in instead of uh, a f um, or we can plug it in instead of a p right we'll get two different ones so first if you plug in right if if we're using a uh, given f and plugging it into a given f then the i needs to be moved to this uh, left hand side and so moving i from the right hand side to the left hand side we'll get a given f is equal to a given p minus i and so that's what we're using here so because we have minus i then minus and minus gives us plus and so we have plus 200 multiplied by seven percent right because i is a seven percent so this is actually zero 0.07 and notice right this is then right we have a given p right still was the was a negative 200 so that's added to the thousand because now they have both as the same discount factor right so just simply by plugging in uh, either a given f for the first one into this or a given p for the second one right here into this 
right? So now if we plug in a given p, then notice a given p is a given f plus i. So now we're plugging it here. So now we have a thousand a, a, a multiplied by a given f. And here's our thousand multiplied by a given f. And then plus a thousand multiplied by i. And so here's thousand multiplied by i. And then we still have this minus 200 multiplied by a given f. And that's now because a thousand also has a given f. Now we can combine them together. Either way we do it, we'll still arrive to the same value of $127.92. All right, so this is actually very useful because we can generalize this. And that way we don't have to look up two different discount factors, right? Notice in each of these, right, the advantages of using these formulas is that in each of these, we only need to look up or compute a single discount factor. For the first case, a given p. For the second case, is a given f, right? And notice they're not the same. Also, this part is similar, right? They're multiplied by a different one. And then here, we have two different amounts that we're looking. First one is s amount, right, or future amount. The second one, we have the present amount or the initial cost amount. So now, what we can do is we can actually generalize it and replace the thousand by p and 200 by s and it would still stay the same right here we would have a minus s and then plus s multiplied by i and here right we would have the second way to compute it would be p minus s but multiplied by a given f instead of a given p and then plus p not s, right? p here multiplied by i. So when we generalize it like that, we'll get these formulas, right? So for general case, when we just have any p, any s, and we want to represent it in terms of equivalent uniform um, cash flows, the equivalent uniform annual cost can be written either as p multiply a given p minus s multiply a given f, or it can be written as p minus s multiplied by a given f plus p i or p minus s multiplied by a given p plus s multiplied by i. So now, right, notice, notice here, right, if you're multiplying this portion, right, this portion p minus s, if you multiply it by a given f, Right? We know that p should have been multiplied by a given p. Therefore, we actually going to have p here multiplied by i. And then here, if we had p minus s, and we multiplied it by a given p, we know that s was supposed to be multiplied by a given f, because s is f, or future amount. And so that's why we add also s multiplied by i. So these three formulas right, are true for this very general case for different p or s values and so they can be easily used and in fact we will use them later in this lecture when we solve one of the further examples where we analyze the alternatives so again right i recommend that you understand these formulas so then you can easily use them when you analyze your um, alternatives all right, great. So let's get moving and talk a little more about a different example of annual cash flow calculations. So notice here's an example where we have five different years and we have different maintenance and repair costs. So in the first year, we have 45 in terms of the cost, then costs increased to 90, then 180, 135 to 25. Let's plot a cash flow diagram to visualize what we have. So when we plot it, we notice, right, even here, we first, right, it's increasing by 45. This one increases to by 90, then it decreases back to by 45, then increases again uh, by 90. So as you can see, right, this is quite, quite a, uh, 
unstructured type of costs. So to compute the annual cash flows, right? So now, right, we still need to compute for all these costs. We just want to represent them as equivalent uniform annual costs. So rather than having right, these, uh, and of course, we're just talking about the cost, but you know, we can also think of them as uh, right, uh, these, these are pointed up, right? But in reality, these are costs. So should we could actually maybe more uh, carefully draw them as pointing down, but because we're going to be still talking about the cost, they always will remain positive. So we could plot them as positive. So now again, right, we want to find the equivalent uniform cost. So we actually want a very similar cash flow, but all of them being equal. Right here, they're not equal, they're all different, you know, they increase and decrease and increase again. What we want is uniform, right, where all the cost is different. So how do we transform these cash flows into equivalent cash flows that are all equal? So one way to do that would be combine all of them into present force and then split the present force into the back into the annual but uniform annual cash flows not the varying annual cash flows so this is the way we're going to proceed here we will find first the present force of all of these varying cash flows and then if we change the present force from the present force we'll find the equivalent uniform annual cost so how do we find pre present force of cost well, we just look at all of them because they're very all the time and there's not much of a structure. We're just going to have to add them all one by one, depending on where, right, and it's counted, however many uh, periods that they're from zero. This one, 45, is one period from zero. So it's going to be, right, one. If we look at 90, 90 is two periods from zero. So it's going to be two that we'll have in this count factor. 180 is three periods from zero. So we're going to have three in this count factor and so on, right? 135, four, 225, five, just corresponding to where they are, right? And discounting them back um, to the present. So again, right? The way we look at it is we look at them separately. So these become future amounts in, in uh, terms of their relationship to where they are compared to the present. So this is a future amount uh, one year removed, right? So we finding the one of to find the equivalent present worth of the 45, which is a future amount. So find P given F. So that's what we have. This is P, this is F, so P given F, 7% one. And then similarly here, this is again a future amount as compared to the present worst. So to find its equivalent present worst, right, find the present worst part of the 90, we just multiply 90 by discount factor P given F. Because 90 is the future, we want to find the present. P, F, P, F. And then we have 7% and 2. And so then, right, we do that for 180 also, so again, P given F, 135, P given F, and 225 is also a future amount, we're finding the present worth of it, so multiply by P given F. So when we look up all of these factors, P given F, at the page that gives us 7%, but for different, right, so it's the same column, P given F, it's just going to be different uh, rows, because years correspond to the rows. Here for row 1, then for row 2, 3, 4, and 5. We plug in those factors, multiply them by the values, and then add. So the sum products will lead us to find 531. So this, the result of the sum product is 531. So this is not the end, though, because we only found the present worth of cost. In this lecture, of course, we are interested in annual Right? And the uniform, specifically equivalent uniform annual cost. And uniform means that they're all the same. The costs are all the same. They're not varying. We can't just go with this one because we want them to be all 
all the same each year, right? So of course, in reality, they're not going to be all the same. But for planning purposes, we want to find the equivalent uniform annual cost. And so we take the present force, and from the present, we want to find the um, annual, right? So find A given P. And so we multiply it by A given P, P discount factor, right? Because 531 is a P, present force. And now, right, of course, it's 7% in five years because we want to replace these five varying costs with five same costs. And so we use five. And so when we do that, right, again, on the same page, 7%, but in the different column, right, not P given F, but A given P column, we look up, right, in the row 5, we look up this discount factor and multiply this. Alternatively, of course, you could just compute using the formulas for different discount factors. You can compute this value as well. Uh, so then you multiply the discount factor value by 531, and that leads us to 130 being our equivalent uniform annual cost. All right, great. So here's another example, example 6.4. The example 6.4 talks about annual cash flow calculations when our cost is kind of similar to what we see before. But, right, we need to be careful. We see 45, 90, 135, 80, 225. Let's still draw the cash flow diagram to visualize whether it's the same situation or not. When we draw the cash flow diagram, notice, right, 45, 90, 135, 80, 100, sorry, 180, 225. This is our cash flow diagram. When we draw it, we can notice they always increase by 45. 45 here is increased to 90, right, by adding 45. Then we add another 45. That increased to 135. Then we add 45 to 135. We get to 180. And another 45 leads us to 225. So quick question to you. What does that mean? What type of structure do you see here? Do you see a structure? Of course, you see a structure, right? It's visually very easy to notice the structure in the cost. And so if you notice, the structure of the cost tells us that that's a gradient series, right? So what kind of gradient series? Because we have two types of gradient, arithmetic gradient and geometric gradient. Which one is that? Right, because the trend is linear, right, we always add, right, increase when the trend is linear, increasing by the same amount or decreasing by the same amount, then it's an arithmetic gradient series. The, uh, the geometric has exponential increase. So then they would be, right, that they would be uh, basically by percentage, they would be increasing by percentage, right, rather than by a constant increase. And so now, right, for geometric, it's increased by a percentage. But here we have linear increase, which is definitely arithmetic series. So arithmetic gradient series, right, we want to transform them again into what? Into a uniform series, where the all costs are the same. So annual cash flow basically means that we want to transform it, transform these costs into Annual uh, cash flows where all costs are the same, have the same amount. So now to do that, notice, remember it's a arithmetic gradient. So arithmetic gradient has two pieces. It has piece A, uniform piece, which would be the same as the very first cash flows that we see in this, in this uh, series. So 45 would be our A part. And then there is a G part, which is the gradient part. And so this capital G part is the increase that we see every single time. And every single time it increases by 45. So the G, G is also 45. So A is already A. So we're done there. We don't need to multiply it by any discount factor. But G needs to be transformed into A. And so that's exactly what we're going to do, right? So 45 is our A, already there. And then this triangle part is a linear increase 
over the uniform part is the g and that's what we need to transform into annual equivalent annual part and remember there is a discount factor that allows us to uh, change g into a and so notice right the equivalent uniform annual cost for all these cash flows corresponds to the annual part that we don't need to do anything with because it's already uniform this 45 and then this 45 is actually a g the second 45 is actually a g and so g needs to be analyzed right so we want to find the equivalent annual amount of g so find a given g and so we multiply it by a given g factor of course seven percent and five it's important to point out that this five right even though g starts at two and there's only four it's always five because that's the way right the cookie crumbles that's the way the formulas are set up is to right to have the values being the same as the total amount of, of payments not the payments were or cash flows were the g for a start but the total amount right and the total amount starts at one right so all together there are five so keep in mind there's it's five right it can be four here four would be not correct this is five and so now right we multiply the 45 by a g because this is a g and then we add together this uniform part and now it's already right made uniform so this g parts all the little g parts they made uniform by multiplying by this discount factor a given g and so together this leads to 129 right so notice this 129 is not the same as when we had those costs right we had the same values but they happened at different times in example 63 to illustrate let's go back to 63 6 6 3 we had also the same values but notice the 180 and 135 were misplaced right 180 happened at year three but then 135 at year four so then right we actually got 130 as equivalent uniform annual cost but in 64 we got 129 and so notice right the, the it matters when we have the timing of the cash flows so very important uh, thing to notice all right great i hope you understood example 64 um, as well as example 63 so now let's talk about the selection um, of alternatives right because a very important point of what we're doing that why we bother with all these long formulas and and different computation computations is that we actually want to use uh, this kind of uh, information or methods to be able to analyze alternatives and determine which alternative we should pursue so in this case if you look at this we have annual cash flow analysis and um, it depends right on what type of situation we face when we select the uh, alternatives what type of criteria we will be using so as you remember from the previous uh, uh, situations we discussed we have three different cases we could have a very flexible case where neither input nor output is fixed and that's our typical situation uh, we also have the fixed input and in, in this case the amount of money or other input resources are fixed or we can have fixed output and then it's, it gives us some kind of fixed task benefit or other output that, that's fixed and so depending on that we have different uh, criteria and so in the very general situation with both inputs and outputs variable what we need to do is we want to maximize equivalent uniform annual worth and the way it's found is basically equivalent uniform annual benefits minus equivalent uniform annual costs right so again benefits minus cost right gives you worse and so that's what we're doing here in the annual uh, cash flow analysis for the fixed output right uh, sorry for the fixed input because input is is the same we only the benefit changes we want to maximize the benefit so the criterion 
for the fixed input is to maximize the equivalent uniform annual benefits. And for the third situation of fixed output, well, output is always going to be the same, but input or costs are going to vary. So the costs, right, is something that we want to minimize. And so the criterion is to minimize equivalent uniform annual costs when the output is fixed. All right, great. So now that we learn about this, which a lot of it is kind of based on the previous information that we already uh, acquired in previous chapters, uh, we can start applying it. So first example is example 6.5, where we have annual cash flow analysis to choose between device A and device B. For device A, we have the following cash flows. Right, so you can see the cash flow diagram. It has an initial cost of a thousand and an annual uniform annual cost of three hundred. And so, if you found the equivalent uniform annual worth, then we just need to change the thousand right into equivalent uniform annual uh, cost. And so, a thousand right is going to be negative because we're looking for the worth. Right, the thousand is going to be negative because it's a cost. And then it's a present amount. We want to find the annual equivalent of it. So A is found from P, right? So A given P uh, is a discount factor that we multiply a negative thousand by, and then 7% and five years, right? Because five years is, is how long the device will last. And then plus 300. So question is, why do we not multiply 300 by anything? Of course, you're absolutely right, because 300 is already annual. We don't need to analyze it. It's already annual. And so this annual worth, again, right, is the benefit, annual benefit, minus the annual cost, right? So minus 1,000 multiplied by A given P. And then we plug in the A given P value right here and add those up, right? And that leads us to the... Equivalent uniform annual worth of device A being $56.10. So now we want to che check device B. So device B has the following cash flows, right? So now our cash flow diagram is a little different. And that is what we what kind of structure we have in these cash flows. We have 300 increases to 350, increases to 400, that increases to 450, and then the year 5, 500. So what is the increase here? Yes, the increase is linear always by $50, right? So again, we have a, a, an arithmetic gradient uh, series. So 300 is the equivalent, uh, it, it, 300 is a un, uh, annual, uniform annual part. And then the G, right, or the uh, arithmetic gradient part is 50. So we just need to analyze two things. We analyze the cost here, and we analyze the G. And so equivalent uniform annual worth for B, right, is again negative uh, 1,350. That's, right, our cost. That's why there was negative. And then they need to be analyzed. So, right, we're finding A given P. So A given P is our discount factor we multiplied by. So percent five years plus 300 because 300 is this part, right? That is that is uh, annual part. And then we have this 50, right? 50 is the increase, right? This gradient. So 50 is G, the linear increase, which is gradient, right? Constant increase of 50. So G need to be analyzed. We want to find equivalent uh, amount for the G. So A given G forces 50. And so 50 is multiplied by discount A given G. Right, this discount factor. Again, 7% 5, right? So remember, it's always, when we deal with the gradient, right, it's always gonna be uh, here N, right? It's not gonna be N minus one, it's gonna be N, and N is five, right? So N is, is all the cash flows, right? Not when the G starts. And so now, right, when we plug in the values for A given P factor and also for A given G factor, and then find the summation, the summation leads to $64 even. So think which device would we prefer? Right, we first think what is the criterion? 
the criterion to select between A and B, right? We he here have different inputs, right? Because the cost, initial costs are different. We also have different outputs because the benefits are different. So now we are looking at the worst. So we need to maximize the worst, right? This is a, a general situation where both input, inputs and outputs are not fixed. Right, this, they're very so we're maximizing the worst. So which one has the maximum or the largest worst? Of course, device B has more largest worst, so that's the one that we're gonna select. All right, great. One more example. So 6.6, .6, where we have annual cash flow analysis for three different plans. We have to select between plan A or, or actually among three plans: plan A or plan B or plan C. And so all of them have very similar, similar costs, right, and cash flow diagrams. So notice we have first installed cost of equipment for all these three plans. Then we have uh, the, these annual costs right, or actual benefits because we have material and labor savings per year. Savings means benefits. So these are material and labor savings per year. These are benefits. And then we have annual operating expenses. So these are annual costs. So the second row is annual benefits. The third row is annual costs. And we also have the salvage value, right? So the salvage value reduces the initial costs. And that happens at the very end. So the first amount would be in the present, right? Or the first row is going to be in the present. The second amount, right, in the second row is going to be annual. And it's going to be positive because it's, it's benefits. The third it's also going to be annual, but it's cost, so it's going to be negative. And then the end of the useful life salvage value is going to be in the future, and it's going to be positive, right? And so, of course, installed cost, the very first one is going to be negative. And so now, right, if you find the annual worth, right, we can do it this way. First of all, right, we're going to find the material and labor savings per year, right? We need to, uh, again, look at the salvage value to find the annual benefits. So the savings, so we're combining the, all the benefits. Material and labor savings are already annual, so we don't need to multiply them by anything. But the salvage value is a future benefit, and we need to find its annual amount. So we multiply it by discount factor A given F. 8% is the interest here, and then we have 10 years everywhere, the same, the same life for all three plans. So now the salvage value rate was 15, um, 1,500, right? So 1,500, right, annualized becomes 104, right? Because we're splitting this future value into 10 years. So it becomes 104. And so adding the two annual benefits, right, now that salvage value is annualized, we're adding it to annual uh, benefit for material and labor savings and we'll get right this total equivalent uniform annual benefit for say plan a we do the same for plan b and again the same for plan c right so all the time every time the salvage value is multiplied by the discount factor a given f and then now we also need to find the cost the costs are going to be with a negative so we have installed cost installed cost is a present right we need to analyze it so we multiply it by discount factor A given P. And then, right, we add annual operating expenses. These don't need to be analyzed. They're just taken straight from, from the above, right, where I described the cost. So see, the annual operating expenses are 8,000. We just took them from the third column. But the installed cost, right, for example, for plan A, were 15,000. We need to multiply it. When we multiply it, by A given P, we just find the, the parts, right, the equivalent parts for the, the same cost, like each, each year during 10 years. So that becomes 2,235, right? So adding those together, we get equivalent uniform annual cost for plan A of 10,235. And then the last thing, right, and the same we do for plan B and C, of course, exact same thing. We also find the cost by combining the analyzed installed cost with annual operating expenses. And then the last thing is to find the equivalent uniform annual worth. And to find the worth, you just subtract cost from benefits. 
So benefits minus cost. So the top part, right, for plan A, that was 14,000. From 14,104, we subtract 10,235. And it leads to 3,869 for plan A. We do the same for plan B, and we subtract from 9,172, uh, right, of the benefit for plan B. We subtract the annual cost for plan B of 9,725. 9, and notice, right, these actually lead us to the negative of 553. So the worst is negative. We're losing money on plan B. And then plan C, again, right, we take the benefits, annual benefits, um, combined to uh, 14,228. And then we subtract the combined annual cost, right, which is 10,917. And it leads us to the difference being 3,311. So again, right, to, to select between the plans, what do we do? You're absolutely right. We need to see, right, which worse is the largest because in this case, the benefits vary and the cost, right? The both inputs and, and outputs are different. The output is our benefit, the input is the cost, they all vary for different plans. They don't don't all the same as they're not all the same. And so in this case, we're looking at the general situation. So the worse needs to be maximized. And the largest worse is is the one that we have for plan A. Plan A has 38, right, in terms of annual wars, we have 3869, which is definitely more, right, than either a negative number or the 3311 that we have for plan C. And so the answer is, right, we need to select plan A. All right, great. So this is where we're going to conclude the first part. This concludes the first part of our lecture. So this is lecture uh, based on Chapter 6, Annual Cash Flow Analysis. And next time, we'll talk more about different type of um, situations, right, where the lives are not going to be necessarily equal. In this case, we had equal lives of 10 years for all three plans. Uh, we'll talk next time about situations where that's not necessarily going to be true. Thank you.